I do not blame Nigerian government. I blame Nigerian pastors. Check what pastors are doing. That is wrong. I have been reading articles on companies and allied matters at Kama, which has empowered the Registrar General of the Cooperative Affairs Commission, CAC, to monitor the financial spending of the religious bodies in Nigeria. The law, from what I can see, empowers the CAC to prove the finances of the church and possibly sack trustees fund to be fraudulent and appoint interim managers. And the Nigerian pastors are crying wolf over this. Look, I am a Christian. Political government is the actual sense of the matter, has no business in the affairs of the church. The reasons are that is a spiritual institution which is answerable to God. Again, the government is not contributing anything to the church. And since the Nigerian government is not contributing anything to the church, there is no need prognosing into the affairs of the church. What is the government going to going there for? If the money there is stolen, what concerns the government? Is it the government's money? So much money of government is being stolen. What has the government done about that? Has it recovered all the money from the political fraudsters before stretching the hand into the church? Rather, it is the church which is helping the government. During the COVID-19 lockdown, many churches donated money and other items to the federal government. Some donated to states in their respective domains. If I don't know any, I think I remember the life donated $50 million to the government. The church is helping the government in many ways, but I cannot pinpoint one thing the government has done for the church in Nigeria that would warrant governments screaming the account of churches and if found wanting, sack the trustees and appoint interim managers. But if I may say this, Nigerian pastors have not done too well. Many of them are floating words acquired from members of their churches. Some are establishing churches specifically for business just to make money and feed their pockets and families. Some are buying expensive cars, jeeps, and cruising the streets of Nigerian cities as politicians too. Some are flying private jets from city to city and from one to the another. Yes, some are heavily rich as the politicians of the war, while their members are languishing in poverty. The pastors are cruising in expensive cars. Some are even richer than the politicians in the country. It pains my heart to see pastors now competing among themselves to know who is richer than the other. Forbes magazine is now showing riches, uh, re uh, richest pastors in Nigeria, along with politicians and other business moguls. There is a there is now a competition among pastors to outdone the other in terms of weight and fame. And you think the government is not jealous, you lie. Rather than the house of God being a center for spiritual, Nigerian pastors have turned it to a business center. And since they have turned it to business centers, the Nigerian government must come in to supervise what the pastors are doing. Do you blame the government? You don't need it. Blame the pastors who are making members and living large than the people they are serving. Some people who do not have job in the secular world are turning to become overnight pastors and with their, and with their tongue speaking, make their members within few years they join the, the rich pastors and the competition continues. Do you blame the government? No, you don't need it. Blame the pastors. If the pastors were actually doing the will of God and not showing weight, 
I do not think the government will think of probing their finance, the writer said. Okay, someone said here, yeah, this country is owned by government and not religion bodies. Besides, churches are not the only religion bodies in this country. And Kama affected all financial institutions and not only religion. If any financial institution, including any religious body, is not pleased with government law, there is an alternative. Move your business to another country or better, still you can go and create your own country where you will have the right to create your own laws. Okay, one Amos said here, yeah, this is true. Imagine pastors establishing universities, but yet the members who are the contractors of these monies cannot afford the universities. During the lockdown, how many members of the church were giving just 5K by these churches donated millions to the government while their members are dying of hunger? They should dance the music. How many imams gave money to the government? He asked. All right. One Philip Okonji said, Well, well spoken. Bl blame the government, blame the pastors and members who have turned the pastors to semi God. They worship the pastors and forgot their biological parents to. Language in object poverty. What do you accept the government to do? All right, someone said that if the quickest way is to make money is to open church, let Buari and his supporters open church and make money too, he said. All right, someone said, uh, okay, God Almighty will bless you for this better truth. Buy the truth and sell it not. Proverbs 23, verse 23. Why are they crying? Members are languishing in total and object poverty, and they are busy buying cars, planes, and mansions. Their children are all in abroad. During Jesus' ministry, did he create on mansions or buying jets? He focused on salvation and repentance. We should stop using the name of God to deceive ourselves. Jeremiah chapter 23 says, Let them read it, and we, let them read it where our pastors have lost focus. God will bless Nigeria, he said. Okay, someone said, yeah, How can you? Okay, let, let me see, see this one. Someone said, yeah, A way to calm down on churches in Nigeria is mosque excluded. Hmm. Islamization. I don't think mosque was excluded. So, hello everyone. I'm going to drop it here. There are so many comments here, but this is the least I can take. What's your view on this? Do you actually think that the pastors, 